Yes, thank, thank all of you for being here tonight. Uh, we're going to talk about a, a general uh, topic of spiritual growth and maturity, but it's all focused in one general area, and that is be perfect like your father is perfect. And that's a concept that most people don't really understand or are uh, try to adhere to. And so there are many requirements in the New Testament and they are all fulfilled by grace. Uh, we cannot mm -hmm. do them mm -hmm. on our own. You know, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, my grace is sufficient and your strength is perfected uh, in mm -hmm. weakness. Mm -hmm. So it's about perfection. And there, the scriptures, there's a lot about uh, perfection, and we're said we're told to be uh, perfect, like our Father is perfect. And let me explain how I perceive it myself. And that is, if we think of God, God is a, a big ball, and uh, He's uh, complete. Uh, there are no imperfections in that big ball or the big sphere, and He contains within Him, contained within Him is the whole universe, okay? And and uh, we're told to be perfect like he is perfect. And so how I perceive us then is like we are little grapes uh, connected to the <laughs> vine. So we are little balls or little spheres as well. He's a big ball or sphere and no imperfections and he's complete and contains the whole universe within his sphere and within his sphere of influence okay but we're little grapes but we have a sphere of influence too and uh, our grape may be uh, com complete it may be uh, a grape and even when it's young uh, and immature so that's not perfect if it's still immature grape uh, it's not perfect yet and so there are really two components. There's this word uh, uh, teleos that uh, in the Greek means uh, perfect. And it has two components, complete and mature. And so we can be that little grape and we can be a complete grape, uh, but uh, just immature yet. And so that's not yet perfection. Or we can be a big uh, mature grape but uh, worms have eaten the little holes out of us, and we're, so we're not complete. So that we're not perfection yet. So to be perf to be perfect, we have to have those two things: mature and complete. Mm -hmm. And it's by the grace of God. And so many people uh, think about what they can do in their own abilities, but all of the requirements uh, in the New Testament require God's grace. And what God's grace is, it's his power and enablement, his supernatural mm -hmm, enablement mm -hmm. that enables us to keep the requirements of the New Testament. And it's not by our abilities. As a matter of fact, uh, our abilities only go, let's say, this far, and then grace kicks in after that. When we realize, oh, that's as much as we can do, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. then grace is going to carry us uh, to where we need to be. So... God's grace begins when we realize we can't do what's being required of us. All of the requirements in the New Testament require grace. We cannot be saved in our own yeah, ability. grace. We are saved by grace through faith. And those two things are very important to work together, faith and, and grace. And so it's his grace uh, that is going to perfect us. Uh, we cannot do it in our own. See, the human mind rejects the concept <coughs> of perfection. Uh, it, it says, I'm not perfect, you're not perfect, nobody's perfect. I've heard a lot of people uh, talk about that. I'm not perfect, you're not perfect, nobody's perfect. But they don't understand the context of perfection in the Bible. Because once you read uh, what uh, perfection is about, it, then you can understand it. And understand that, no, we cannot get there on our own abilities, mm. but we can get there by the enablement and empowerment of the Holy Spirit, and that's called 
uh, that's called grace. So I want you to read 2 Corinthians uh, 12, verse 9, uh, that tells us, that really defines what, uh, explains to us what grace is and what it does. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Okay. Ooh, hallelujah. So That's good. That's good. It says that we're perfected, that even in our weakness, he's made us perfect. In, our strength is perfect. So there's a lot of things that are made perfect. Uh, our love can be made perfect. We're to be perfect. And, and so it's important to understand this concept. And, and really a good reason to understand it, you can have all kinds of discipleship programs. And I'm sure many uh, different places have discipleship mm -hmm. programs. But are they maturing you into perfection? Mm -hmm. They may be taking you the wrong direction. Oh, wow. And so this is a, an important Thing. We're all under, we all understand a little bit about growth and, and maturity and about discipleship, but all of that needs to move us in this one direction to be perfect, like our heavenly mm -hmm. father mm -hmm. is perfect. perfect. Okay. So mm -hmm. what I want you to understand is that God does things within us. He puts his nature within us but we have to work that nature out through character. And so there's something that God does. He does his work first, and then we come along and we work out uh, what mm -hmm. needs to be worked out. And a lot of people uh, just depend on what God has done, and they don't recognize that there's a requirement uh, for them. But let me tell you, there's two parts, God's part and your part. Okay, now mm -hmm. let's just start with uh, uh, love, for example. But we're really going to be talking about perfection. Uh, perfection, uh, but that's a type mm -hmm. of, that embodies growth and maturity. Okay, so if we think about the Holy Spirit, when we are born again, uh, Romans 8 verse 9 says that the Holy Spirit dwells within us. The Holy Spirit dwells within us, okay? But then Romans 5, 5 says that he pours, he pours the love of God mm. within us. Mm, mm. So the Holy Spirit comes within us. That's when we're born again. He pours uh, the love of God within us. That's his work. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's God's mm -hmm. work within us. But then we go to John, uh, 1 John 2, 5, that there's something we have to do in order to perfect that love. So we have love within us. And what we have to do, we have to obey mm -hmm. his work. Mm -hmm. That is 1 John 2. Sherry, do you have that verse? 1 John 2, 5. Is that correct? Yes. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. Okay. So this is just an example then of something being perfected. That's just in a nutshell. Uh, that's in a nutshell how we get our love perfected. The Holy Spirit comes within us. He pours uh, the love of God within us, but it's not perfected until we do something about it. We have to obey the word of God. Now, everybody, and that will bring perfect love. Now, everyone will say, I love God, but love is not an emotion. Love depends on mm, our keeping mm, mm. the word of God. So if we keep this word of God, well, then we love him. If we keep this word of God, we love him. If we keep this word of God, we love him. But if we don't obey this word, that it limits our love. So let me go through that again. Mm -hmm. So the words and the requirements that we obey, then that is a statement of our love. That's an expression of our love. 
But where we stop obeying him, that limits our love. You know, we like, everybody would like to say, oh, I love, I love God. I love mm -hmm. God. We all love God. But how many of his requirements are you obeying? How much of his word are you obeying? So this mm -hmm. is a, a, an overview then of perfect love as an example of uh, perfection, what it means. Okay, so now I want to go back to Matthew, uh, what Jesus said in Matthew 5, and it's verse 48. He says, be perfect like your Father in heaven is perfect. And if we put it in context, I'm going to have Sherry read these verses, 43 through 48, and you will see that it's about how God uh, relates to people. He mm -hmm. relates to all people. Uh, he, uh, his sun shines on those who are good and on those who are not good. He, his rain falls mm -hmm. on those who are good and on those who are not good. So he has this attitude and this perspective of a relationship with people. He treats everybody the same. He treats everybody the same. Uh, now, we need to be like God. That's what this scripture is saying. Mm -hmm. That's what came out of Jesus' mouth, that we need to be perfect like our Father. Or in other words, we need to act oh, yeah. and think and have the same attitude that God has. So we'll see this in Matthew 43, of Mark 45. 5, verses 43 through 48. We'll look at the context of what it means that the Father is perfect, and we're supposed to have the same attitude he has. Okay, Sherry, read this. You have heard that it is said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Okay, see, you uh, see differences mm -hmm. there. But God doesn't like that. He mm -hmm. says we love everybody. Okay? But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven or that you can be perfect like he is perfect. Woo. For he makes his son, the son, S-U-N, rise on the evil and on the good. And he sends the rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? And then verse 48, Therefore you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Okay. Hallelujah. So if we look at that in context, what he's saying is treat everybody the same. Right. Treat everybody the same. Like, speak kind words to everybody. Don't don't uh, speak kind words to those people you like and then be evil to evil people. No. You be kind to all people. Oh hallelujah. That's what that's what he calls perfection. Uh, that's what he calls perfection. And when we can be kind to all people, we, we can uh, be gracious and speak gracious words to all people. When we have that same perspective and same attitude as God has, then we can be considered perfect. Mm, mm, Hallelujah. Mm, mm. Now, perfect then in this case doesn't mean you've never made any mistakes. It simply means you are mature and complete. And, and so you take a little boy, a baby boy, when he's born, he is complete. He has all his fingers, all his toes. He has a nose and eyes and yeah, all of that. He's complete. He's not mature yet. So we couldn't call him perfect. But if he was mature and complete, uh, then that's someone we could call perfect. And so what, what, that Jesus is wanting us to do here. The requirement, it is a requirement. It's not, it's not a suggestion and it's not try to be perfect and not try to love people. 
not try to love all people. This is love all people. Hallelujah. Don't don't be hypocritical. Don't have prejudice. Don't do those things. You treat all people the same. Be gracious. Speak gracious words to all people. Then you will be perfect like your father in heaven is perfect. Now, don't think that this is an insignificant topic. This is a very significant topic that includes so many different things. And so we're just introducing it uh, tonight. Be perfect. I, I don't know if anyone has uh, brought this uh, to your attention before, but it's important because we can have perfect joy. We can have perfect peace. We can have perfect love. All of these things relate to each other, and it relates to how we treat people. That's what, what it's saying. That's what Jesus was talking about. How do you treat mm -hmm. people? Uh, do you have some uh, close friends? You say, oh, I'm going to be kind to these people, but I'm going to shun the, those other people uh, because I don't like those people. We can't have that attitude. We have to have that attitude that we see here in God, how God causes his sun to shine on all people, all people. his rain to come forth on all people. And so it's, oh, he doesn't make that distinction. Oh, you're evil, so you don't get my sunshine or you don't get my rain or you're good or whatever. It's He is consistent and so he's complete. And so when we look at the perfection that's calling for in the New Testament, it's a it's a perfection of being complete and mature. Now, we went through the example where the Holy Spirit's working in us to bring us love, and then we work it out to bring it to perfection, to perfect love, as we obey his commandments, as we obey his words, then that love is perfected in us. Mm -hmm. And and I said that as uh, if we love, keep a few of his word, words, a few of his commandments, then we have limited love. And, and that's why people can fool you because they say they love the Lord, but they are disobeying his word. Uh, then there's something inconsistent with that. If, they're, if they say they love the Lord, then their actions are, ought to back that up that they ought to be obeying the word of God. That's uh, mm -hmm. that's how you mm -hmm. tell who really loves God. And so obedience, <laughs> you know, mathematically, and I think George will understand this, uh, obedience equals love. Obedience equals love in in the way the lord looks at it so so if we obey his word then we really love the lord if we obey his word now what i want you to see if you think about jesus uh, when he came to the earth he had the nature of god it was so wonderful he had this wonderful beautiful nature the nature of god but you know that jesus had to be perfected mm -hmm. oh i want us to read hebrews Hebrews chapter five, he learned obedience by the things he suffered. So here we have to, we have to follow Jesus. We have to follow Jesus. And you might think, well, you have a, a, a great nature and a wonderful nature and you have the nature of God in you. And Jesus did, but we need to follow him. And you know what he, what he did? He had to learn obedience. And how do you learn obedience? By obeying the word of God. And did you know that he became perfect? He, he was born with the nature of God. He, he had the spirit within him. But he had to learn obedience. And the way you learn obedience is by obeying the word of God. Should you read this? Well, and before I read the whole verse... I want to talk about that word uh, of the things he suffered. That's not anything evil. That's not sickness. That's not disease. That's not uh, bad things happening to you. Uh, 
uh, it's this 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 word suffer here means to allow. It means he allowed the Holy Spirit to work with him. He allowed the Holy Spirit to mold him and, and make him and and help him to obey. So I'm now going to read Hebrews 5, 8, verses 9. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered or allowed. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Okay. Do you see that? Jesus was perfected. He was born with the nature of God. He had a wonderful nature within him, but there were things that he had to do in his life to reach perfection, to be perfected. Now you think, oh, well, uh, I, I don't think perfection is a, an important thing. Jesus had to be perfected. Mm -hmm. You and I are required to walk mm -hmm. in perfection. So I'm trying to present this in a way that it you'll realize, oh, this is significant. This is a really big concept, an important concept, and, and it has not been emphasized uh, in the body of Christ. Amen. It is important for all of us. You know, even with Abraham, God told Abraham, walk before me and be perfect. That's right. So it's, he's the father of our faith. He had to be perfect before God. Jesus had to be perfect before God. You and I are required to be perfect. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Just think about this. Let thank this you, Jesus. sink in. This is an important concept. Now, what happens is God pours things inside mm -hmm. of you. God takes the initiative. He calls you to himself, and he gives you. Uh, the Holy Spirit, but then you work things out. Uh, he starts the process. He puts things in you, but you work them out. Mm -hmm. And I want us to look at Philippians 2. Should we read these? Philippians 2, 12 and 13. God has a part and you have a part. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Now Paul is, is talking to the church at Philippi. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Okay, so believers, believers had their part to play and that was working out what God had put in them, okay? For it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. So God's working in you. He's oh, putting it in. Oh, hallelujah. And we're working it out. It's the process oh, we all go through. He, he puts he put the love of God in us. He put the love of, he put the Holy Spirit in us. The Holy Spirit poured the love in us and then we worked it out into perfection mm -hmm. by obeying the word of God and loving God. So our love was perfected by our obeying the word of God. Mm, and mm. where we stopped obeying is where we limited our love of God. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Okay, so uh, this is the last passage that, that I'm going to focus on. And this is in Second Peter 1. And, and the first part of it just, it, it kind of gives an overview of, of uh, the fact that we need to be perfected. And then in the, uh, another set of verses we'll look at, we'll talk about some steps. Okay, so what I want you to see in the first part, what is it that uh, brings us into perfection? It's the promises that God gives us. Mm. So God gives us promises as we uh, receive the fulfillment of each of those promises. It's like we're going up a ladder. Or we're going up steps, going higher and higher, one promise at a time. And we do that by the power of God, by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's the nutshell of what's happening in this process of perfection. We're going up some steps into the spiritual realm. We're going higher and higher. And the, we take 
Every step we take is by a promise being fulfilled, that we have received mm -hmm. it, and we have believed it, we have acted on it, and the promise is fulfilled. So it's the promises that become the steps that allow us to go higher and higher. Oh, wow. So if wow. we never, if we never appropriate any of the promises, let me tell you, we're not going higher and higher. It, it's the You're just stay on the same level. It, it's by those promises, by appropriating those promises that we're able to move higher and higher. So I want to share you to read this first uh, passage mm -hmm. in Second Peter 1, verses 2. Starting in verse 2. Mm -hmm. Grace and peace be multiplied to you okay. in the knowledge of God. Okay, let's just stop right here. Grace and peace. Now, peace, uh, we know that in the Bible, peace uh, in the Hebrew is the Hebrew word shalom, which means complete. And so you've got grace, Woo! you've got that grace, and you've got that completeness of shalom, grace and peace. And grace, it's the power of the Holy Spirit. And so this is not your abilities. This is grace and, and peace. peace. Okay. And oh, through the knowledge. knowledge. So we've got the, the through the knowledge. That's, mm -hmm. that's our part. Now, knowledge, there are two kinds of knowledges in the Bible. Uh, one is factual knowledge, and another is a personal relationship. relationship with the Lord. And, and I, I explained this earlier that uh, if a man and if a husband knows a, his wife and she becomes pregnant uh, and they have a baby, okay? So that word know, and that's the way the Bible describes it, knowing. So the husband knows the wife and what mm -hmm. that means, an intimate relationship. So she becomes pregnant. So that's what, it's a personal, re intimate relationship. When, when he uses the word no, there can be a personal, intimate relationship between you and the Lord. And so that's what the knowledge is he's talking about here. A personal, intimate relationship with the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, you know, and something was just just revealed to me uh, this instant, and that is the scripture that said Jesus says, uh, depart from me, I never knew you. And, and so what Brother Fred was just explaining to us was that to know the Lord is to have that personal relationship personal, with intimate relationship. intimate relationship with him that produces, Hallelujah. that brings forth fruit. Hallelujah. A little baby is the fruit the life. of the life yes. between that husband and wife. Amen. And so... We're to bring forth life, and that the only way to do that is to to be intimate and and, and have a relationship uh, with the Lord. Hallelujah! Ooh, hallelujah! Okay, so, what verses are we going to read? Okay, this is verse three. The through what? Through eight. Okay, three through eight. For His divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness is granted okay. through the true knowledge of him okay. who called us by his own glory and excellence. Through these, he has granted to us precious and magnificent promises so that by them you may become partakers or participants of his divine nature. Okay, so it's the promises oh, let me read on. That, that bring forth the divine nature within us, okay? Having escaped the corruption that is in this world on the account of lust. Okay, so these two things cannot abide together, the divine nature and this worldly corruption. Uh, corruption. They cannot abide together. So if you have... God's nature, divine nature within you, mm. then it's going to all of the worldly lust are propelled and expelled. Mm, and so it. they're not going to dwell, co-mingle together. Mm. And so if we've got the nature, okay, so we start then with the nature. 
Uh, and how do we get the nature? It's by the promises. And which of the promises that we are appropriating, that brings us the nature. But the nature is not the end of the process. So we're looking at a process here, and, and I'm going to show you in, in this next section of these, still in Second Peter 1, uh, we're going to look at uh, the foundation is faith. And we're going to start adding upon it, block upon block, going higher and higher into the supernatural realm. All of these. And there's mm -hmm. seven things that we're going to add on to faith. So faith is the foundation. And so now we're in a place where we're adding uh, things to it. And, and all of this is going to add to perfect love. It's going to it's going to take us to perfect love, a perfection. So th this, see, God has some requirements. But the good thing is he also has a program on how to meet the requirements. And this is his program. And it's right here. And what are these verses here? Okay. Um, all I have is verse 5. 5 through. Through 8 of what? Uh, of Second Peter 1. Oh, okay. Still, it's the same. Yeah, still Second same Peter. Pattern. Okay, Second Peter one. Yeah, still Second Peter one. What is it? Five through eight. Five through eight. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we start with faith. Faith is the foundation. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And then we're okay. going to start adding some things to faith. Okay. Now, for this very reason, also applying all diligence now, in your faith. I've got to stop here. Diligence. This word diligence is a very important thing. The opposite of diligence is laziness. A lot of people that are so busy with other things, they appear to be lazy because they're not bringing diligence to do what the Bible is saying right here. It's requiring us to be diligent and not so busy and distracted doing other things. We need to be diligent, okay? In your faith, supply moral excellence. Okay, so we're going to add. This is the first thing we're going to add on top of our faith. Faith is a foundation. First thing we're going to add onto it is excellence. I just like the word excellence. Mm -hmm. we, uh, some say virtue. I like excellence. And that means in everything you do, mm -hmm. you bring yeah. excellence. If On your job, you bring excellence mm -hmm. there. Uh, and if you're supposed to be there at 8 o'clock, don't come in at 8.15. That's not excellence. Excellence, if you're supposed to be there at 8 o'clock, you leave at 8. If you're supposed to stay there until 5 o'clock, you don't leave until after 5 o'clock. So excellence and everything, <laughs> and that becomes your testimony. People see, oh, you are a Christian. I know you're a Christian. You're doing everything with excellence. Everything with excellence. See, there's a lot of uh, businessmen and women who say we're Christians, but they're not fulfilling their word. They're not mm. to, just to work and deal with uh, uh, Christian businesses. A lot of them act just like the world. And if you mm. are a Christian, you say you're a Christian, then you need to act differently than the world acts. Mm. Come forth with excellent. And so if you give somebody your word, you're going to do something, then do it. Then do it. So that's what excellence is. Do it to the best of your ability. Do it Amen. with excellence. That's the first thing. Faith starts, and then you add on top of that excellence. Then to excellence, what are we going to add? We're going to add knowledge. Knowledge. Okay, but it's not a factual knowledge. It's not about reading uh, books of dead men. It's about looking <laughs> at the knowledge of God's Word, uh, the living God, and having an intimate personal relationship with with the Lord, okay? The next one is self-control. Then add self-control. Now, the thing Woo! about self-control, it's not really <laughs> a natural self-control. It's about letting the Holy Spirit, Spirit rule. Rule you <laughs> and control you. Yield to the Holy Spirit. That's what uh, the spiritual fruit of self-control is yielding to the Holy Spirit. That's the self-control. And so people think, oh, I'm... Uh, uh, they are big and powerful, and they they're in, in control of things. No, what mm. what self control? The fruit 
of the spiritual fruit of self-control is yielding to the Holy Spirit. I yield myself to the Holy Spirit. I yield myself to the unction of God. I yield myself to the Holy Spirit. I let him be my God. Okay, so we're going to just add a few other things here. Yeah, we're not going to go into a lot more detail. We're bringing yes. some conclusion. The next thing we're going to add is perseverance. We're and not going to quit, in and, other words. And that's endurance and that's patience. Mm -hmm. You know, we come against trials and tribulation. It says the trying of your faith works Worketh patience. patience. Works patience. Mm -hmm. So it means that we're going to face some difficulties. But we need to be uh, consistent with our faith and with patience. See, patience is going to bring God's time. Mm -hmm. It's in God's mm -hmm. time. Okay, what's next here? Okay, is godliness. Godliness. So, oh, hallelujah. Okay. There's a lot of people that have a form of, of godliness, godliness, but deny, deny the, the power. power there. Mm -hmm. so it's not about denying the power. It's godliness with the power of God. Okay brotherly kindness okay now they know that we have passed from death, death unto to life, life because we, we love, love the brethren we love the body of christ don't, Woo, don't, hallelujah don't think that uh, oh i'm just going to sit at home and i've got all this work to do and i'm not going to fellowship uh with the body of christ uh, that's not brotherly love and they and Nobody knows you pass from death into life. Oh, you, and that's they the truth. Know you have passed from death into life because you love mm -hmm. to be with the, the members of the body of Christ. You know, and you know, since the age of nine, when I gave my life to, to Jesus, I love the people of God. And I want to be with the people of God. We want to be with you. Otherwise, we would be doing something else. We got in very late last night, but we wanted to be with you tonight. We love the body of Christ. We've gone from death to life. That's right. It shows. Okay. okay now here's the, next the last one. one. And it says, and it says brotherly kindness. And brotherly kindness. Mm -hmm. We're going to add love oh hallelujah that's how you get perfect love yeah that's complete. all of those things are work together all of those things are working together and increasing one another it all starts with faith but we can begin to add to and multiply and that is the process that's the program for mm -hmm. how we can be perfect like our father is perfect we have to be diligent mm -hmm. and build on those promises we have to see those we have to receive and act on those promises and receive them, see them fulfilled in our life. And then we begin to add all of this because he's put the things within us. He's given us the promises. Now we've got to work things out and the things we work out, we put on faith. We put, uh, let's just go through the things that we start mm -hmm. adding to faith. Just add okay. that list right here. Right. We're going to add excellence. We're going to ask knowledge of, of the father self-control, perseverance, godliness, and brotherly kindness, and then we're going to add love. That's the way we work out the what has been put inside of us. God poured things in us, including the power of the Holy Spirit and the promises. Now, we work those out with these, these character, the character traits. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. And that is being perfect like your yeah, father is. Perfect. In is verse perfect. 8, let me read verse 8. For it's a, a summation of everything that, that we've been uh, talking about tonight. For if these qualities are yours and they're increasing in your life, they do not make you useless nor unproductive in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. They make you fruitful. Oh, hallelujah. And you are ordained <clears throat> to be fruitful. Hallelujah. In the kingdom of God. 
Hallelujah. In the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Okay. Thank you, you know, for being here. I'm going to turn it over to Jerry. You know, I'm I'm thankful for this this word that that we've heard tonight because it gives you a a goal out there. Be you perfect, even as your father is perfect. And even though human nature tells you you can't be perfect, that you're going to make mistakes, but that has nothing to do with God's perfection. And so what Brother Fred and has has given us is a kingdom perspective of what perfection really means. And I believe that each and every one of us, God can perfect each and every one of us. And so I speak over you tonight that you will walk perfect before the Father, that you will desire perfection, that you will be one with him that you might bring forth much fruit in the kingdom of God. 